Hello and welcome to a new video about standard elements. Last time we had already a combined element. This time we are also combining two elements. This time we are doing it a little bit different than last time. Last time we had the dt1 element, so a derivation element combined with a pt1 element. This time we are combining a p element here. Yeah. And again a derivation, the d element. Yeah. So we're doing a p d element. Okay. So this is the goal, p d element. I will show you how we are going to combine those. Okay. So we are talking about a p d element now. How does a p d element look like? A PT element consists of a P and a D element, and there is one element, another element, this one is the P element, and this one is the D element. Both share the same input. Uh, so here is the input, which will be put into both. Uh, the result of the p element is the result of the p element. The result of the d element is the result of the d element. And here we have mixing point. Uh, and here we have the total result. Okay. So here we have xi from s, here we have xo from s, and those two are added together. So this is some sort of parallel, parallel approach, pt element. What does it mean? So the transfer function of the p element Let's have a look. P element, it was just K. I will call this KP right now. Hmm. To determine also the difference between the Ks. Yeah. And the transfer function of the D element. Also, this, let's have a look. Yeah. It's S multiplied by KD. Yeah. So it's S multiplied by kd. And what is now the total transfer function? The total transfer function g from s is of course gp from s plus gd from s. Okay, So this is kp plus S multiplied by KD yeah? and I will simply now get this KP in front 1 plus S KD divided by KP and this one I will call uh, I will simply call T TT yeah? because this is a constant divided by a constant is another constant this I will call KT. Yeah? So this is KP 1 plus STD. This is the transfer function. This is the transfer function of a PT element. KP 1 plus STT. Now let's have a look at the at the uh, Frequency response, we said we just have to replace S with J omega. So this means this is Kp 1 plus J omega dt. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Let's have a look how this behaves. 
the real and imaginary axis. The two parts, real axis, imaginary axis. Well, KP, see, here with KP. And now the differential part, so this part here, this is 1 plus, and here we have omega tt. Okay. This is the length of this. And we do the multiplication. So, the absolute value, uh, the absolute value of g from j omega equals kp, absolute value of kp, uh, multiplied by the absolute value of this one. Uh, and this is the square root plus pl 1 real, 1 squared, 1 squared is 1, yeah? and omega t squared, omega t t squared, square root. Okay? This is the absolute value of this. Yeah? And the argument is that two angles, a multiplication, two angles need to be added to each other. First one is 0, so 0 plus I don't have to write it, 0 plus, and now it's arcus tangens, arcus tangens from omega t divided by 1, omega t divided by 1 is omega t, omega t t in this case. Hmm? These are the two values. Okay, so how does they look like? at the extremes. At omega equals zero and at omega equals infinity. Let's have a look at the at the absolute value. The absolute value from J zero equals so if this is zero hmm, then this is zero, it's the square root of one, one square root of one is one, it's kp. So at zero we are at kp. Okay. If this is unlimited, this is something multiplied by unlimited, this means the absolute value at unlimited is unlimited. Infin we go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> we go to infinity. It's enough for us. The argument hmm, at zero, arcus tangens from zero. Well, let's have a look. If this is zero, it's zero degree. Yeah. We can always think of this. Of course, the arcus tangens of zero is also zero. Yeah. And here, the argument is what does it mean? 1 plus, and if this is going to woo, infinity, yeah, then we are 1 plus 90 degree, we are at 90 degree. Okay? So this actually, that's it. Yeah? Now we have a look at the Bode plot and at the step response. So we're talking about a PT element here. The transfer functions were G from S equals, I will have, however, called it KP. KP multiplied by 1 plus STT. And this means j omega equals kp 1 plus j omega tt. Okay. We know those things. Uh, they are the combination 
of the P element and the T element. Huh? Oh, I also have to write the absolute value is Kp multiplied by the square root 1 plus omega dt squared. And the argument is the arcus tangens omega dt. Okay, this is the math. We could do it again point by point, no issue there. Hmm? We could bring it again to the time time area and calculate a, a fix a, a function which is working. However, we could also think about what is behind. Let's start with the step response. The step response of a D element looked like this. Poo! Okay. So let's simply draw it here. D element, here we are zero. Here we go into infinity, peak here, and then we're dropping back to zero. This is the step response of the, of the derivation part. Okay. Now what was the step response of a proportional part? Here we're zero. Then we step to, we jump to a value. K, Kp in this case, Kp, yeah? and here we remain constant. This is the step response of the proportional element. And what would be if I both add them? 0 and 0 is 0. Then we are going up to infinity, and then 0 and kp is kp. Okay, so we are not simply by combining those two elements, also in the plot we are able to construct this. Let's see if we are also able here. Proportional part. Just for your reference, this is what we had here. We had here k and 0. So k was here now 2. So we have here kp. We are at 0. Ah, we had kp all the time. 0 is the argument. We are here. Okay. And now, how did the derivation element look like? We had here some omega d. Omega d was 1 divided by kd. And then we had factor 10, 10 times more gain. So on and always 90 degree. So I will simply select here something. So I will again do it here. This is omega d, yeah? and omega d is 1 divided by kd. Okay? Here is this point where we reach 1. These are the other things, and also here we are at 90 degree. Plus 90 degree. Yeah? Now we add those two. Okay, now we add those two. Well, you know, here we have Kp and we are adding almost nothing. Yeah? So here in this area, we are just looking like a p element. So we are, will be at Kp. Yeah? So it's 2 plus 0 0.2, okay, and even we also have to consider, yeah, we are doing this type of, of adding. Yeah? So it is not, we're doing vectorial or 
imaginary numbers adding. So it's not, I cannot just add the absolute values. Huh? So we are going to here. How, where are we if both yeah, the, the derivation part and also the, the real, the, the proportional part are the same? Well, the proportional part is here. The derivation part is this part here. Yeah? Omega multiplied by kd. Yeah, here, and if both are the same, the absolute value, I'll try to show it here, yeah. try to show it, I'll try to show it here. Yeah. Here's the imaginary, here's the real axis, yeah. this here is the real part, the, the p part, kp. Yeah. And here we have j omega kd. Yeah? This is the derivation part. Well, think about the derivation element here. Yeah? Omega kd, omega kd, j of course. Yeah? So if if this absolute value and this absolute value, we have to add those two, yeah, because we are adding. Yeah, so we are ending up in something like this. Yeah. This is this is the absolute value we want to have, and if both are the same, so if we have here forty-five degree, yeah, then we are at square root of 2, yeah? factor square root of 2, so we are here factor square root of 2 higher. Okay? And here, above here, if we have 100 and add 1, it's almost nothing again, so we are ending up here. It looks like this. Okay? Just by thinking how it looks like, how we add those two. Yeah? Where are we here? Here is seems to be a band. Yeah? How big is this frequency? Well, we had the frequency omega d. Yeah? At the frequency omega d, we are at one gain. Yeah? We want to get to kp gain. Yeah? So the frequency here must be kp higher. Okay? Because if I have more, more gain, I need more frequency. Yeah? Exactly the same amount. So here we are at kp multiplied by omega d. Yeah? Now omega d was 1 divided by kd, so this is kp divided by kd. Yeah? And if we take a look here, kd divided by kp is dt. Yeah? So this is 1 divided by dt. Yeah? So here we are at 1 divided by dt. Exactly this dt here. Yeah? Because this we substituted kd divided by kp. And here with kp divided by kd, the reverse value. Yeah. So here, this is the point where we end up. And the, here, both parts are the same, so we are ending up at 45 degree. Here, we are at 45 degree. Below here we behave like a p element, above here we behave like a d element, yeah? and in between we have a transition phase. Yeah? We have a transition phase. So this means we are we stay here with the argument, then we start to change. And here we're getting close to, to 90 degree plus. Yeah? 
Also, just by thinking, yeah, we even managed to read out this TT here. Yeah? Even this we managed. Yeah? Because, you know, if this, if omega is 1 divided by TT, this is getting 1. And here we have again square root 2. Yeah? So this is the square root 2 higher of Kp. And if this is getting 1, arcos tangens for 1 is 45 degree. Park everything fits together. Yeah? Mathematical approach here. And this is somewhat a graphical approach yeah? to add the things graphically. Of course, yeah? we see we're going again to infinity and we said this d element. This is not really working. Yeah? We used a pt1 element to make the, the derivation element a little bit more real. Later, in a later video, we also do this with the pt element. We're doing exactly the same thing as we did to the d element with the pt element. We're adding a pt1 element. That This is a different video. Yeah? Next time, we're going to talk about a very similar one, hmm? a pi element. So this is a proportional element and an integrational element, an integrating element. Hmm? Both exactly the same. Yeah? Pi elements are pretty important, so we will see. Yeah? Pi elements are often used as, as controllers. Hmm? Yeah. But we will also come to this. Hmm? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.